I've been using AIs to write a lot of code lately, and on paper, that means that I should be heavily using GPT-5. On paper, it is the best, and in practice, it is still the smartest, most powerful model out right now, but I have found myself drifting towards other models. I've been using Sonnet 4.5, Haiku 4.5, Grok Code Fast, and now the new Cursor model is really, really, really good. And I really wanted to talk about this because I feel like there's a lot getting lost in the best model discourse, where on paper, GPT-5 is the best model, but you can see in my usage here, I'm only going through about a million tokens in the last couple weeks versus Composer 1, I've gone through 40 million, 4.5, gone through 12 million, another 7 million on Haiku, bunch on Sheeta. Like, I'm not actually using it a bunch because the way I've really come to think about this is there are kind of two archetypes of models. There's the hands-on models, and then there are the hands-off models. The hands-on archetype is the type that I want to be actively working with, if that makes any sense, is the ones that I would want to run in something like Cursor. And the things that I found really matter here is cost, speed, generally it needs to be smart enough, but really the most important thing I found is it just needs to be very steerable. It needs to listen to what I tell it to do, take good direction from Cursor rules, and just not bring me out of the iteration loop. And the models I found here that do really well are uh, Grok Code Fast. This is a very slept on model that's actually really good. Um, Haiku 4.5 is awesome. Um, the new Composer model is definitely my favorite model at this point. And then in the hands-off category, this is pretty much to me just kind of GPT-5 at this point. You could argue that Sonnet 4.5 kind of lives here. But really what these models to me are for is these are the ones that you want to put in some background job and just let run forever. You don't wanna care what they're actually doing. You don't wanna be constantly reading it because you're gonna be waiting a while. A GPT-5 generation takes a while. And the only reason why I'm really using it in cursor at this point is just because it is a step function beyond all the other models in UI capability that I'm like, well, I'm gonna build out the project, I'm gonna do the thing, I'm gonna structure it, and then I'm gonna be like, all right, GPT-5, make this internal tool not look stupid. And then it does a really good job, it just takes five minutes to do it, and half the time it fails, because it fails to write the tool. It's a finicky and irritating model that I wish was way better than it is. And while I don't personally have any serious real world experience doing this like crazy background agent thing that some people are doing, I am friends with Scripted Alchemy, Zach Jackson. He works at ByteDance, he's an insanely good engineer who is basically just running like 10 instances of Codex in GPT-5 in the background doing insane things in a while loop. It's really hard to describe and I wouldn't believe it unless I, I was literally sitting hanging out with him and Theo and he showed me what he's doing. It is completely insane and he swears by GPT-5. So for these like big background agent models, I fully trust his judgment here and Something I want to go play with in the future it does sound really fun, but for day-to-day -day work, GPT-5 is just not it. Because the reality is, a lot of these models are basically smart enough. You know, every time a new model comes out, all the new benchmarks happen, it's like, oh, this one just did 10% better on Arc we whatever the fuck bench. I don't know, I don't care, these don't have any implication on my life. I think technically Composer benches worse than some things, but I found it feels better than other things. These are gigantic probability machines that I feel like you just have to spend time with them and see what feels best to you. And the thing that I really care about is it being smart enough to understand what I'm saying, but also be very steerable. Sonnet 4.5 is fast enough that it's kind of usable for the hands-on thing, but really I found it's just, it's so damn expensive. I was lighting money on fire with Claude last month when I was only using Sonnet 4.0 before any of like these really came out. The whole reason I started using Grok Code Fast was because I was burning through usage on Cursor. I think my Cursor usage in September was like $120 of almost entirely Claude 4. It's, it's bad. It's not super usable in the day to day, but these are. You can see in here, I'm paying about the same for Composer 1 and Claude 4.5 Sonnet, and the token difference is like 4x. So it's like a $2 in difference for a 4x increase in tokens. This price is just so much better and so much more sustainable for day-to-day -day work. If you haven't tried one of these like really fast, smaller models yet, I, I wanna show you how good this actually feels. I added this page to my personal site a little while ago. I basically just found that I was setting up a lot of random Svelte apps for demos and different internal tools and projects and whatever. And I was just doing the same thing over and over again. So initially I was gonna make like a create T3 app type thing, but I was like, wait, 
I have cursor agent. I can just basically write up all the prompts I need for bootstrapping the projects the way I like them, put them into my site. I can toggle all these. So this will set up a new Svelkit app with the Vercel deployment set up, the convex set up. I'm actually going to uncheck this because we don't need this for this example. Uh, the cursor rules on how to use it, some useful packages, async Svelte, hello world, uh, customize the VS code, which is really useful for me. Like I like having this top bar be a different color so I can see which project I'm in because I usually have like three or four open at once. And then some basic Tailwind theming. We're just going to copy these right here. I'm going to make a new Svelte project. We'll just call this a uh, vid demo. Uh, minimal TypeScript, prettier Tailwind, none of this. Uh, Bun is by far and away my favorite package manager right now. We're going to go into vid demo. We're going to open this in cursor, uh, make this bigger so you can really see it. And then I'm just going to hit paste. This is the gigantic prompt that got uh, vomited out of my website. <laughs> gonna hit, uh, oh, we're gonna switch this to Composer 1, hit enter, and then you're gonna see this thing is just gonna freaking fly. Oh, lovely, I'm gonna hit my limits. But you'll see it does a really good job. It instantly makes the to-do list. It's running the command to bring all the cursor rules in here. It's installing the packages. And like, these are the slowest parts of it. Running curl and running bun install is the slowest by far, and then I have to accept this. But look at how freaking fast this goes. This makes iteration and actually working on a project so much easier because something that I was really finding, even just working with Sonnet, I would tell it, okay, change these three files, add this functionality for me. And then I would just be sitting there waiting for it to do something for like two minutes. And then that like, that two minutes is dangerous. That That's two minutes where I could tab into Twitter or I could look at my phone or I could go do something else. My brain gets out of the loop. Having these fast models just kind of saves me from falling out of sync like that. If I go back over here, start my dev server, go to localhost, there it is. This is a new SvelteKit project fully knitted from scratch in like two minutes at most. This project is fully set up and ready to go. And one of the big things that I added to this, let me bring this way over here, is the cursor rules. This is something that I found to be incredibly important. Uh, I'll, I, I'm gonna rant about vibe coding a lot at the end of this video. There's two more things I wanna show off here. But uh, basically what this does is I went through, I spent a ton of time on these, like trying to get really good cursor rules to dial it in for the way I like building things. If you wanna grab these, they're in my site. You can just run the command that I just showed here to bring them in your project. I have stuff for like my global rules on how I wanted to act, the never throw documentation on how to use this library correctly, the Svelte stuff in here to steer it correctly on like, okay, here's how to use Svelte 5, don't use Svelte 4, don't hallucinate these things, some Tailwind stuff, some Convex stuff. This is getting me much better outputs from the agent itself. And you can see that here where I'm just gonna go back into the agent. I'm gonna be like, uh, build a client side to do app in at page.svelte. Uh, don't add any server side functionality. Just keep it simple. Cool. So I just tell it to keep it simple. It's going to go through and do all this stuff. It's going to think for a little bit, and then you'll quickly see it is just ejecting code out insanely fast. I'm not even going to pretend to understand how this model actually works. They did something crazy. They RL'd some model somehow, and the results are just incredible. Like, yeah, you can see right here, just did everything perfectly. Because of those cursor rules, it didn't make a lot of the typical Svelte mistakes. The on click is not on colon click, it's on click the way it's supposed to be. Runes are being used correctly up here, derived is being used correctly, it usually fucks this up. State is all correct, everything just kinda worked. And you can go way further and harder with this than I even just showed there. I was working on this earlier today where I'm building out the internal monitoring system for Theo and I's channel. Uh, I've been building this for a while. I'm on V3 of it because I keep changing the way I want to do things. But in V2, I really like the UI and setup I had there, but I wanted to switch my data model over to just like a normal SQL database instead of convex because a lot of the work I have to do in this project is like just really heavy backend data processing stuff that convex just doesn't excel at as much. So I switched it over to normal SQL, but I wanted to port the UI over. I basically wrote it a couple paragraphs here where I'm like, all right, I want you to set it up in this directory, run through the old project, read everything out of that source, basically copy the root page of the app and then copy the channels pages. And I put this into plan mode. I found plan mode to actually be really good because I did this one in Sonnet 4.5, which is a definitely a smarter model than Composer is. It asked me a bunch of clarifying questions, which is really nice. And then in the end, it wrote up this big long plan of like, okay, we need to add all these queries. We need to add all these remote functions. 
update all these pages, do all this stuff. Then composer one went through, made the to-do list, and then just cranked this out. This took literally like 30 seconds to port 2000 lines of code over from a SvelteKit plus convex code base over to a SvelteKit plus drizzle code base. And the end result was perfect. It one-shotted it exactly right out of the box because I'd given it very clear directions on how I wanted this stuff actually to be done. You can see in here in the original prompts, when I'm telling it what to do, I'm giving it instructions like, hey, here's how you use remote functions because obviously these are not in the training data of any of these models because they came out two months ago and these models were trained a while ago. The training cutoffs are getting better on a lot of these models. These are the cutoffs for Claude. Sonnet 4.5 is July of 2025. Uh, so is Haiku. They're both July 2025, which is great. They're much better at Svelte and more niche, newer technologies. Uh, if you compare that to like OpenAI, GPT-5's cutoff is still like September 30th, 2024, which kind of sucks. And if you look at Grok, it's November of 2024, which for something like React doesn't matter nearly as much, but for something like Svelte or even a newer version of Next.js or whatever, this does end up actually really mattering. So you have to give these models instructions on how to actually use these new modern technologies that you're just gonna wanna use in any application you're building. This is especially true even if you're doing like non-web type stuff, if you're doing something on mobile or you're doing systems engineering where it's like super specific, you can get these models to give you good code. You just have to give them examples. You can see I'm giving it examples on how to use remote functions correctly in channels.remote.ts. Those were ones that I hand wrote myself. I did them all correctly. I know how I want them to work. Once it has that pattern, it can pattern match on that super, super well. These things are really prone to screw up the async svelte data fetching stuff where you can just await within a component now. It's super convenient, but they don't know that you could do that. But since I gave an example on how to do that, it didn't screw it up at all. The output was correct right out of the box. And if I go all the way down here to review, you can see all these changes it made. It is a massive, massive set of changes. It did everything the way I wanted it to. And I wanna end this with a sort of rant on vibe coding and AI development and all that stuff because there's just, there's just a lot of nonsense in this right now. And the reality is this stuff is incredibly useful. Like this is the app in production that I built out over the course of probably about five hours of work at most is a full turbo repo mono repo that has a background worker that is syncing all the videos from my channel and Theo's into a SQL database all being hosted on Railway. It has a SvelteKit front end that is consuming the data out of that database. It has custom authentication set up and it all just works. And I, most of the code in this was AI generated, but the foundations of it were not. You can get really good outputs if you're really good at writing code, if that makes any sense. It did not set up this mono repo. I set up this mono repo myself. It did not set up the bun worker. I set that up myself. The database package was not created by AI. I created this myself. The schema was written by me. I designed the data model the way I wanted it to work. I made sure that all the indexes I needed on this database were created by me. I audited this, I did it myself. The same thing with the actual SvelteKit app. All of the foundations for this were done by me. I set up the auth and the auth stores. I set up the initial data fetching. I set up the connector from the database to the client. I set up all the rules on how I want this actually being built. All of the code that the AI wrote for me is code that I could have written myself. I just didn't want to spend the time on doing it because it's an internal tool that I just want to kind of get out there and have access to and use in my day-to-day -day work. When people talk about AI speeding up engineers, they're not lying. It will absolutely speed you up if you know what you're doing. The second you start trying to vibe code something that you don't understand, you're gonna get fucked. It's gonna go badly and it's gonna just crash and burn in weird ways that you will not understand. But if you're a good engineer, you know what you're doing, you could write all this code yourself, you just don't feel like it and you wanna do more, try pushing these things a little bit harder. Try giving it slightly harder tasks. Worst case scenario, it gives you something bad, you just hit deny. That's the one thing that I do really, really like about Cursor as opposed to any of like the CLI coding tools like the open code and the Claude code. Those do have a really good experience to them and especially for like background stuff, they're amazing. People are using GPT-5 in a while loop in the background with Codex and it's great. But when I'm working with a hands-on model, having this review mode open in my editor where I can accept this change or I can make a change to what it edited right here, such a better experience than anything else. That's one of the biggest problems I have with the CLIs is they'll just kind of make changes to the files and there's no way to like really see what they did unless you're committing every single time you go and run the agent 
which means that it can be kind of hard to undo stuff and check their work. And it's hard to trust them to do bigger things. But when you're working with something like a cursor or windsurf or whatever, you can kind of let them run and do this 2000 line change, review the entire change, hit merge, and it just works. So that's my point with all this. If you know how to write code, please just go, go try one of the new fast models, Haiku, Grok, Composer. They're all really, really good. You will be very pleasantly surprised with the stuff you can get out of it. And new technologies, niche technologies, they are not even remotely dead. You can write good code with them. The future is weird, but cool.